Hey guys, I'm Cohen Hellens here at Rolling Loud Studios in Miami, Florida, and I'm going to show you guys a demo of the BX console MX 9099. Let's jump in. I can't tell if you're lying to me or not. I can't help you if you're lying to me. I can't tell if you're trying for me or not. I can't tell. I can't tell. I can't, I can't tell if So first, let's go over to 808. So with the 808, the first thing that I felt was missing or lacking, so to speak, was some of the 60 hertz, that low end, that little thump that we want to have, as well as some mid-range. So a little bit of around one kilohertz and slightly a little bit more higher, or between three and four kilohertz to just get the little techy sound of the 808 to come through. Next, I'll show you what I did on the drum group. On the drum group, I used the compressor to add in some more control, some glue, and I felt that the low end on the drum group was lacking. So instead of going on the individual channels, let's say the kick drum, I wanted to give it an overall boost at 60 hertz on the entire group. Now, since I added in the 60 hertz, I also felt that now, because of a lot more low end, some of the high end sheen, that brilliance, that expensive sound was missing and therefore I added some top end to the drum group. Moving on to the music loop, originally I played around with the EQ a little bit, added a little bit of body around 300 hertz, added in some high end, just some expensive sheen that I wanted to feel, but then after comparison with the original dry sound versus the EQ sound that I put on there and the context of the record itself, I felt that it technically didn't need anything except for the console non-linearities, the console saturation, so to speak. Last but not least, the vocals. So on the vocals, the first thing that I did was remove anything below 150 hertz, just the low end with the filter, so we don't have any pull-ups or any large rumble that we don't want to have in the vocals. Then I moved on to some gating to make sure that in between vocal takes, we don't have any unwanted noise. Moving on from the gate, I added some overall control to the vocals with some compression. 4 to 1 ratio, knocking off about 3 to 7 dB on the highest peaks, medium fast attack time with a fast release time to gain overall control and glue of the vocals. Now with the vocals controlled, I wanted to add in some EQ. I wanted to roll off some of the proximity effect. So on the first band, the lowest band, I used the shelf, which is its default setting, and rolled off a few dBs on anything below 300 Hz just to gain some more overall control in that low end. Now with the vocal even more controlled, I felt that we needed to add in some presence so that it would cut through in the mix better and it would be audible more to the human hearing. So I added in around one, one to two kilohertz, a few dBs with a very broad musical cue setting, some dBs to bring the vocal more to the forefront. Additionally, I also like a very expensive sounding vocal. So I added in some high end to the vocal as well. I can't tell if you're lying to me or not. I can't help you if you're lying to me. I can't tell if you're trying for me or not. I can't tell. I can't tell. I can't. I can't tell if you're lying to me or not. I can't help you if you're lying to me. 
I can't tell if you're trying for me or not. I can't tell. I can't tell. I can't. I can't tell if you. And that's it. As you can see, this is my new favorite plugin. If you want to try out the BX Console Amic 9099 yourself, head over to the Plugin Alliance website today.